Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, whatever time it is that you're watching this video. Thank you once again for clicking on the Pen Boy Roy Fountain Pen Review channel. The subject of today's video is the Paniter La Grande Bellezza Arco Fountain Pen. I have been rather fascinated with the Paniter brand ever since the release of the first La Grande Bellezza back in 2017. What intrigued me about this brand was Dante Del Vecchio, a name so synonymously associated with the Visconti brand was all of a sudden shifted. It almost appeared to happen overnight. At the time, I had never heard of Paniter, but I gave it a shot anyway despite Paniter's lack of a fountain pen track record, solely because I was a fan of Dante Del Vecchio. The big man Double DV was a start of the rise of the Paniter pen brand, as well as the pen that inspired me to even start this channel. Since the first release of the first line of Paniter La Grande Bellezas, Dante has taken the brand from a paper brand largely unknown to the fountain pen virus infected to what it is today, a major player and contender for top spot in luxury fine Italian writing. Every pen that is released from Paniter is a brainchild of Dante Del Vecchio, and without exception contains elements that are uniquely innovative, be it in aesthetics or function. The release of the La Grande Bellezza Arco is no different. Stick around, because I'm going to cast aside my admiration for the man that is Dante Del Vecchio and nitpick the absolute crap out of this pen. Coming up next, the neutral zone. Those elements about the pen that are neither good or bad, or can be good or bad, depending on you. Do you waste page after page when writing because your handwriting really sucks? Does your boss ream you out at work because he just can't read your sucky handwriting? Do your ideas get tossed aside like garbage because your handwriting sucks? Well, don't give up hope just yet. Thanks to the new Estabrook SD, you now have all the tools you need to write your thoughts and ideas clearly and neatly. Looking for a raise? There is simply no better way to ask your boss than on paper with a fine fountain pen. By using your new Estabrook SD, your boss will no doubt entertain and comply with all of your requests and demands with enthusiasm. And voila, all is right in the world. That is until he says, but I'm gonna need you to shave. <coughs> Estabrook, the right pen for the way you write. The nib is a custom designed nib made by Dante Del Vecchio and manufactured by the German nib maker Bach. It's 14 karat gold with hooked scallops cut out on the sides of the nib to enable a nib that offers a bouncy, flexible writing experience with a decent amount of line variation. The nib is decorated with swirly designs on the shoulders, a keyhole shaped breather hole, the Paniter brand logo, and name. Under the branding is the nib size designation as well as the words quill nib for what this nib was named. And finally, the stamping of the gold content. The feed is your standard Bach single ink channel feed used by many pens that use Bach nibs. The nib and feed are part of an unscrewable nib unit interchangeable with any other Bach number no. 6 nib unit. The nib unit screws into an hourglass shaped grip section with knurling at the top and oval cutouts to serve as the ink window. The body is made of a special blend of acrylics by Dante to emulate the look of the celluloids used in the good old days when fountain pens were everywhere and handwriting didn't look like words and letters pissed into the snow by someone having seizures. The body has a hairline taper to the metal piston knob used to fill the pen as this pen is a piston filler. The end of the piston knob has the limited edition number over 888 with Arco and Paniter, all laser engraved. The cap, as in all the La Grande Bellezzas, is a soft touch magnetic cap that locks the orientation in the same place every time it is closed, using opposing and attracting magnetic polarities as the mechanism. The finial is a flat dial that has the brand name in relief style raised letters over a knurled background. The clip is the custom design clip that makes the pen unmistakably identifiable as a La Grande Bellezza. It's a spring-loaded clip and tapers up to enable ease when sliding into pockets. The center band is an embellished design from the original, adding length with an extended sloped collar. On the front is the brand name in raised letters with the familiar knurled background, as well as the phrase, the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog made so well known due to its use of every letter in the alphabet on the rear. The pen was packaged in the same outer white cardboard box as the previous releases, only this time not designed to fall off the moment you open it. Inside the box is the familiar dark green doorstop shaped box that opens up from the top with two lids. 
Inside is the pretend off-white leather with a grip that holds your pen. In this release, we don't see the sample cards included in the previous offerings. Instead, we have a raised cutout that holds the included and newly released Paniter pen filler. Also included is your standard brand and warranty information, as well as instructions on how to use your new pen filler. That's all I have for the neutral zone. Moving on to the good. Those elements about the pen that are good. The nib is branded as a Hyperflex nib. It's designed to offer a writing experience that is springy, bouncy, and smooth with the ability to offer line variation for the lovers of handwriting and calligraphy. Is the use of the word hyperflex a bit of an exaggeration? Sure. I think it's fair to say that the line variation achieved with this pen is significant enough to qualify this pen as a semi-flex pen at best. It doesn't come close to the wet noodleness of a Richard Binder or Linda Kennedy flex nib, but it sure does play well with other modern pens such as the Pilot Custom 912, FA nibs, the Pilot Falcons, and the Aurora flex nibs. Where this pen shines, and does so in stellar fashion, is in the performance. The bounce and snapback is quick and crisp. The feed keeps up with the ink supply needs that the nib requires. The tuning and adjusting of the nib is also fantastic. I really appreciate that before, during, and after pushing the line variation and line width, the nib never feels scratchy, misaligned, or ever catches on the paper. It's a smooth writer and does the job of an everyday writer as well as a fancy calligraphy writer like a savage. Never did I encounter hard starts, skips, or the dreaded baby's bottom. I really love this pen and the way it writes. It is important to say that this pen and the way it writes is a very unique experience, and getting familiar with it is not an instant process. But after using it for a while and becoming familiar with the scope of what this pen and nib is capable of, you will discover that this pen is in a class of its own. There really is nothing else like it. Yes, there are certainly pens out there that can offer greater line variation. Yes, there are other pens out there that are also equipped with gold nibs. Yes, there are other pens out there that are made of beautiful acrylics. And yes, there are pens out there that have internal pistons. But it's really the accumulation of all the nuances that are thought out and deliberate, yet subtle, that makes this pen brilliant in both function and design. Think of the Beatles. Each member of the Beatles, John, Paul, George, and Ringo, alone are good musicians but it's the combination of the Fab Four that made them more than just good musicians. It was together that they became legendary. It was together that they became timeless. And it was together that they were able to create something so revolutionary that musicians nearly 60 years later, whether they know it or not, are influenced by the genius that was, that is, the Beatles. This pen, to me, is many elements that are good but when combined are synergistic and make something more than just good, but amazing. It's what makes the writing instrument more than just a writing instrument, but a piece of art. There's also no shortage of things to talk about when it comes to the aesthetics and how beautiful this pen looks. The acrylic is deep, reflective, and complex. One can simply say it's just brown, but then there is only one appropriate response, and that is to simply say you're just an idiot. My favorite color is not brown, but this acrylic is so beautiful, it's above preference. Anyone of any taste and style, at the very least, can appreciate the look, if not be completely enamored by it. Basically, what I'm saying in sum and substance is, it writes good and looks good. I got good words. I also admire the growing evolutions to the line. The Argo marks the first integrated piston mechanism in the series while adding design elements to the look all the while retaining everything that makes a La Granda Belaitza pen a La Granda Belaitza pen. It's a fantastic piece of art that truly embodies the meaning of the phrase fine Italian luxury. Unfortunately, as with any luxury, the cost is compensatory. And speaking of cost, moving on to the bad, let's talk coin. This pen has an MSRP of $698 here in the US of A, with retailers pimping this out for $558. That's a lot of money. I understand that there is a lot more than what common knowledge provides us that makes this pen cost what it does. There's more than it just being a numbered limited edition. There's more than just cost of materials, manufacture and export. I understand that there's vision, inspiration, creativity, artistry, risk, failure, and willingness to do things that can and will challenge ideas and standards that people are comfortable with. I understand that it's these things that creates a renaissance of culture. I just wish it didn't cost such fat stacks. That's all I have for the bad. Moving on to the ugly. Those elements about the pen that should not be, but are. 
It's certainly easy to talk about the wonderful things about this pen, and it's for that reason that talking about the things that are ugly about it are as important, if not more. Equally important is the willingness and ability to be fair and impartial, be it for better or worse. Having said that, this pen in all its amazingness has flaws, as all things do. And being that a mere flaw, minor or otherwise, can make or break something, it is crucial that we examine it. Take a look at this section. As we have seen in every pen released by Paniter to date, we are once again left with scuffs and scratches, resulting in subsequent discoloration of the grip, caused by the act of capping and uncapping the pen. While the degree that this concerns some may vary depending on the individual, the fact of the matter remains. This should not be, especially to something this beautiful at this price. Although this is merely aesthetic and in no way a detriment to function, as I said before, the beauty of this work is not found in isolated elements, rather those elements combined in concert. So this flaw that stems from the act of using the pen as it was designed to be used is something that could taint the experience for some. This may be minor and may very well be excusable. However, it would be inappropriate for me as a reviewer not to point out that although minor, this has been reoccurring. So it is fortunate that after my mentioning of this issue in my Paniter UR review, Dante told me that he can't live with this kind of imperfection and will work to fix it so that pens released in the future will not again be plagued with this ugly element. Personally, I believe him. Not just because I like the guy, but because genuine passion breeds complete and total obsessive compulsive drive to achieve perfection on an emotionally disturbed level. And I believe that Dante Del Vecchio, the Grandmaster Double DV, is this kind of a man. And I believe he will bring the world to a new renaissance of fountain pens. I believe in Dante Del Vecchio, and if you do too, so state in the comments below in no uncertain terms by typing the words. I believe in Dante Del Vecchio, Grandmaster Double DV. That's all I have for the ugly. It's high noon, decision making time. Should you or should you not pull the trigger on the Paniter La Grande Bellezza Arco fountain pen? I know I went straight up adrenaline junkie on the pen and the ugly, but despite that, I really love my Arco. The timelessness and beauty of this pen is magnificent. The flaws I spoke of, although there, to me, are not enough to put this pen out of grail status contention. For most, this will certainly be a grail pen that will take a good amount of time to save up for. For most, this pen will mean sacrifice to acquire. But even for those wonderful fountain pen virus infected individuals, getting this pen will be a euphoric explosion of pen happiness. Although imperfect, art is not beautiful for being perfect. So pull the trigger on this pen. It's certainly worth more than its weight in gold, if of course that much gold is worth more than the pen costs. You know what I'm trying to say. However, if an imperfection is something that you can't live with or come to terms with, minor or otherwise, realize that the section scuffing is something that, in the case of my pen, is unavoidable. Take the poll and let me know if this is a deal breaker for you or not. That was my review on the Paniter La Grande Bellezza Arco Fountain Pen. I hope you found it helpful. Thanks again for watching. I love you guys. Be well, be safe.